As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be. Oh man, it's eight o'clock. And so that'll make it a. I don't need the spotlight. I shine just fine. Hi, I'm Karma, and yes, I am a bitch. Brav Bros. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Brav Bros, your favorite podcast from the bros for everybody, for whoever wants to listen. I am your co-host, Steel Russell, joined as always by the one and only. Ah, oh, damn it! I had it. It was it was in regards to uh, last week's episode. Um, the diarrhea plane. Yeah, it oh, was uh, Scoot Stain McPoops. <laughs> Scoot Stain McPoops. All right, not bad. Not bad. I'll go with that one. Actually, on the heels of that, I've kind of realized what I need to do. Obviously, we've got Bravo going on. Football's back. Got to follow my teams, make sure everything's going well. Everything's going well so far. Yep. But to take my brain off of it for a little while, I'm getting into weird events that happen in the world. Okay. I like this. This, so, is, this is a new... It's not a new segment. It's, this is just a, kind of a peek into my brain. This okay. is how I'm going to calm myself down on like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday when I'm getting ready back for football. The newest one is the guy in the fucking hamster wheel trying to go across the Atlantic. Oh, Reza. Yeah, his yeah. name was Reza something. He, did he not realize he was going into the eye of a fucking hurricane? Did you not know that he's tried this like three other times? Yeah, why now? I don't know why now. He got pretty far. Was... He got 70 nautical miles away. Did he really? Yeah. I thought he got like just off the shore. No. And they, like, no, we got out there. Did you see the the wheel? Yeah. it's. I, it looked... He's, 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 he's close to mastering it in my well, opinion. No, here's the thing. Because it looked legit until i started looking at it and i'm like all right well those are just medicine balls from like the gym mm-hmm. and some like borderline styrofoam coolers you get at 7-eleven yep but a very well welded what well, that was intentional well welded well welded hamster wheel uh-huh. with medicine balls stuffed into it would that thing sink he got pretty far without it sinking obviously he was going into first off just don't do it in september probably you know hurricane season do it in like just don't June. do it well, no, if you're going to do it, do it. Like, I, I support your dreams, buddy. Anyone wants to do that, you want to take a hamster wheel across the Atlantic and try to end up wherever you're going to end up. He's going to have the same problem that most of the explorers had in, like, the 1400s, though, right? Oh, you don't really? know where you're going. Oh. There's no way he's going to be. He, has a he definitely has a GPS thing in there. I guess, but he's, I don't if know. If you've got a compass, just keep going east. Yeah, Eventually, just, you'll just hit keep something. going east. You'll either hit Africa or Europe. I don't know what you're going to do, but... I support him. If he wants to keep going, keep on going. That's one of He's those definitely things. on some list now, though. Oh, yeah, for sure. But it's always interesting to me, like, why is that illegal? Why is he not? I know it's dumb. Self, He's going to die. Self-endangering is illegal. But no, I mean... He's going to end up on some sort of list, and what's going to happen? He's going to go to 7-Eleven and buy, like, 15 to 30 styrofoam coolers, and it's going to snap right away. Oh, uh, he's back at 7-Eleven. He's, he's got, got those enough. coolers. <laughs> oh, shit. Watch out. Reza's back. He's back. <laughs> Keep an eye on the coast, boys. Well, I know that this is our midweek episode, so it's not a Rose and Thorn week, but in light of what you just said, I want to share something from last week. We discussed the whole poop scandal on the airplane, right? And uh, we Did really corporate message us. No, I, oh man, that would have been so much better. No, but my cousin messaged us, and um, she has helped us with a lot of the artwork that we've done uh, for the Brav Bros like live show when we did that, our first virtual show, which seems like ten years ago, like yeah, last Christmas. Not even, it's not even no, not even that long last ago. Last Christmas, I gave you my heart. Were you doing this? No, no, we're okay. Not <laughs> where I wanted to go, but. We call her Moosey. That's her nickname since uh, she was a little kid. But Moose texted me and said, Thank God you and Shooter discussed the diarrhea play. I was in a blue mood this morning, and you fully turned my day around. So, <laughs> diarrhea can do that to you. It can really turn your day around. <laughs> so I, I know we don't do Rose and Thorn, but that, I had to read that one in light of last week. And well, since you're I not think, doing current events. But that's the thing is, yeah, I guess we're now doing current events, which I think kind of lines up perfectly with the audience and kind of how we operate anyway. Because in most of our group chats, we'll just send random stories and be like, yo, this is fucking wild. This is oh, great. yeah. Or we're, we're not going to get into like the weird conspiracy bullshit with like UFOs and like did the, were the pyramids built by aliens or anything like that. But we're going to talk about some guy in a hamster wheel going across the Atlantic. We're pooping on we're airplanes. We're pooping on an airplane. Yeah. People are talking the about it. We're going to talk stuff. about it. Come to the Brav Bros for your current events. Fuck CNN. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> no, hold on. Fuck news <laughs> outlets before people start go. pinpointing. There you go. Yep. Just fuck news you outlets know. in general. Yeah. Let's not get into that thing. Anyway, 
Let's, uh, it is the midweek. We got to do our power rankings. So let's power rank. Let's, or do you want to do it differently? Should we power rank the cast of Roni since we're doing Roni or do you want to rank the shows only because let's, let's, the shows are now turning off? Yeah. Uh, the the shows are turning off. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to sleep. Uh, well, I, the other thing is we've also pretty much had the same answer for the most part. For yeah. That. So let's do that. Well, pretty much when, once Crappy Lake ended, we were like, all right, we just got to pick the rest of these now. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can we can just kind of cycle from show to show until we figure out a different segment. And, you know, as we typically do, if the audience is listening right now and they want to hear a segment, you can contribute to the Brav Bro show. Oh, let's do that. Because you guys might be smarter than we are. Let's put out a, I'll put out a little question thing. What yeah. segment should we do next? But let's do our power rankings. The, for... the answer is just going to be do current events. <laughs> it's like we're already doing that, but yeah. I like I actually really like the current events yeah. idea. Uh, but let's do let's rank Roni. All right, we can rank some Roni. Um, I have Uba in the number one slot. Yeah, she might Henry. never leave. She might never leave. You uh, know why? She looks like she's getting better and better, too. And that's a, that's what a girl's trip does. She's going. She's going. Gooing. She's doing better and better. And the other thing is, she seems like the most genuine person, and she mm-hmm. actually seems nice. Like, she seems like a nice person. I would agree. And I I like that. But yeah. continue. So, Uba uh, yeah, one. I, I like that a lot. Uh, so, I'm going to put Uba up at number one. I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna throw Aaron at number two. Then I'm gonna do Bryn, Jenna. Whoa. Side Jessel. Okay. Okay. I don't hate it. I have some discrepancies, but Is no- too low for you. Yeah, but Still? but you cooled on her. No, I no, I haven't. But uh. I'm not like up in arms. I understand it. I understand your power rankings. Okay. Here's mine. Uba one. Above and beyond, honestly. Two. This is going to shock you. Is Aaron. And she was at the bottom for me at the start of this. Yeah. Three is Jenna. Okay. Four is Bryn, but she's, I could easily have her like two, three level. It's just, she has to go four because. I see. I, I disagree with putting her as high. Like I have her at four as well, and I, I don't. Or I have a, do I have her at three? I don't know where the hell I just put her. Now you had her. At four. I could. Ha- yeah, I think I had her at four. I could have her higher, but she doesn't. I don't know. She kind of irks me sometimes, and then she comes back, and it's like I think she just is who she is. And anytime that somebody is who they are, and it's not really like great for the show or bad for the show, you're gonna be right in the middle. Right in the middle. Okay, that's fair. And then after Bryn, I've got this one's tough for me. The bottom two is tough. It's I think it's honestly Jessel and then Sai. But not because I hate Psy. Psy really frustrates me. Yeah. Because there's a lot of things that she does that I really enjoy. And I love that she shares as much as she does. And she seems real. But she's also kind of a dick. She is. She's definitely kind of a dick. Um, The sticking point that I had an issue with her this week, as kind of just a general vibe for what we're going with, because we're in Anguilla. Um, No, people said it's Anguilla. I don't care. Oh, we're just trying to change Double it every L. time. Double L is a Y. That's how it works. <laughs> trying to fix my fucking brain. Who are you telling that to? I don't know. Somebody. No, my issue with Cy this week was she planned a trip like I would plan a trip. Okay. What are you guys doing? Uh, we just have a really cool villa. Let's just go to the beach. We're going to get drunk on the beach. We're going to come back. We're going to get a shower. We're going to go grab some dinner. We're going to come back to the beach. We're going to get drunk. It's like you have no real plans. What's like, wrong this with is, that? This is not a housewife, tri- housewife trip. That is a me trip. Okay. You would throw some golf in there, and that's what I want to do. But I don't. I don't that see doesn't a play. It. it doesn't play for TV. You have to have on these housewife trips. There has to be something weird. Did you not like the episode? I thought it was fine. I didn't oh, get. Okay. I didn't get anything out I of see, it. Really. I thought it was a good girl. I trip. thought it was. It's good because they're connecting because they have to be together. There's no way out, which okay. is what we always ask for. But you need some structure in the trip. Every other, think of every other housewife trip that we've ever seen. Okay. Every one that we've always talked about. There's always something interesting going on. There's some sort of activity that brings but them together. Not whatever. Always, they don't always hit. Let's let's talk shamans. Sure, they then. don't hit. Let's talk shamans. You, got, you hate the shaman but scenes. It's still something else. You would. Wait, whoa, whoa, talking, whoa, in, whoa. In the world of housewives, this is not a housewife trip. This is a friends trip to the beach. We're just going to get drunk and go to the beach. It's no, too I, real. It, <laughs> 
You need to pick a fucking lane, pal. <laughs> <laughs> the wishy-washiness is ridiculous. I'm not being wishy-washy. I'm just saying do some fucking events. You were Plan so fed up you with can't shamans bitching. and sound baths. Oh, I don't care. I still am fed up with them. But you would rather I'd that. rather see a shaman than them just going to the beach and just getting drunk. Because you're, uh, imagine filming that. You're like, all right, I got to film fucking six hours of conversation. They probably love that. They don't have to bounce around to different locations. Who knows? I don't know. If I'm a showrunner for that, I am furious. <laughs> Also, we get to see like no athleticism. There's no games out there. Oh, like, there does need. We need a game. We need a game. We need do a need game. a game. You need so something can... in the ocean. You need something going on there. We have to gauge the athleticism. Do you know what? I think we actually just saw this in Beverly Hills. Learn how to surf. Half the girls went to go I learn how to surf. That's a very good like barometer for all housewives should be forced to surf one scene so we so. can rank them. Yeah, rank. Their I like balance. that. Yeah, let's 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 put that out in the universe. Start making every housewives cast surf. Sure, yeah. In. <laughs> but that's going to take us right into Roni. Before that, we got sidetracked by uh, current events. But let's not forget, <laughs> it is Victory Tuesday. We usually do Victory Monday, but we're recording on Tuesday. The Victory Birds won. Tuesday. We are 1-0. and It's a short week, though. So short I'm, week. I'm on to the next already. I'm yeah, I am, too. We're, I'm, we're getting ready. It was a shit game, but yeah. It was a terrible game. We don't need to talk about that. We're 1-0. and We got the win. We got the Vikings on Thursday. Yep. Primetime Kirk. Yep. We got a chance to to come back. I'm glad we're playing soon because if I had to think about that win for a week and how much of a disaster it was, Listen I'd be upset. radio all week. I don't want to. Yeah. No, I didn't even put on 94.1 yet. I didn't want to hear it. I don't want to hear the negativity. It's I just not wanna, bad. It's really it not okay? bad. That's it's, good. I don't know what's going on. I guess we have a good team. So people are just Ever since waiting. we gave Trey Turner a standing ovation, the entire city has I don't know. If they shit shipped. the bed again, if they play the same way they did on Thursday. It's going to be a nightmare. See ya. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, I'll lead the fucking charge. I have no problem with that. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Victory Tuesday. On to the next. On to the next, baby. But that takes us to Roni. And we are back in Anguilla, 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 whatever you want to call it. Uh, we will... A-Town. <laughs> Eight. Thank you. That's perfect. We're back in A-Town. Atlanta. And... Don't... Now it's confusing. <laughs> <You> were... <laughs> <laughs> we were so close. But we're back in A-Town, and uh, the ladies are headed to dinner. And a little fashion conversation comes up because they're admiring Jenna's shoes. Uba with a funny one line. You can get those on Amazon, but they'll say Prado instead of Prada. Again, I like when she, I don't know if dumbs it down is the right word because she's, it's not, she's not dumb, obviously. It's just like when she relates to us, yeah, like, like the everyday people that do shop Amazon for Prados instead of Pradas. Like I like that a supermodel can confirm like yeah you can get the same shoes on Amazon. And it's, it's just it's really funny for her to say that to somebody like jenna too right because Who, of how high like yeah maybe she doesn't always portray the high fashion but she's I, I don't know i guess she's marketing it she's running it she's operating it she's i don't think she's, she's designing it no she's but been she's involved been in, in it somebody... since for her whole life so it's you know it's another thing but it's really funny the the difference between the two you get uba who's a supermodel and you get jenna who is running all of these important brands. Yep. And the supermodel is the one who says, no, you can get that on Amazon. No, we don't really worry about it. I just, I like that, that we can relate to somebody that's so much more wealthy than we yeah. are. That just, nice. I think it's cool. But Jessel can't help herself. And she's like, why don't we do like a dress swap? Not a wife swap. <laughs> and she brings back up the drama between Bryn and Aaron and Abe and the shit at the party, which had been squashed a little bit. I agree. It hadn't really been discussed at length, but now the issue is forced. And I was hoping for a drama free dinner. I, I know we I was, I, I was not actually, I'm happy that this popped up. I, I was too, but I, I, I'm not upset. I just was like, Oh, I wonder if they can get through a meal like without fighting, nah. but no, of course they can't, but they start to get into it. And Bryn intros with, I want to apologize. I was like, Oh, cool. For calling your party boring. I was like, ah, no, <laughs> you missed the point. <laughs> and Aaron had the appropriate response, I think. She's like, I'm I'm just very confused. Like, yeah. you're apologizing for calling my party boring, which, yes, that was rude. But you have no apology for hitting on my husband? Yeah, and I, I don't agree with how Bryn took that. Bryn took it like, I shouldn't apologize because I know in my heart of hearts that I wasn't flirting with your husband. It's like, okay doesn't always matter what you feel and what you wanted to do. It matters how it's conveyed to the offended party. Correct. So if you offended somebody and you didn't realize that you offended it, just fucking apologize. Like, it was really funny to see the way that her brain works 
and it works so differently than most people <laughs> that she couldn't even comprehend why Aaron was still upset about it. And that's why I'm, I'm happy that this popped up. And I thought it was a funny little one-liner by Jessel. Just sneak yourself in there, do a little, yeah, like, was good. throw a little shade in there good. just to see what happens, a little hand grenade out there, just see see who hops on it or lets it bomb, you know? I, hate I don't the know. Move. Um, but, yeah, no, I was fully into it and fully on board with what Aaron was saying, like, just baffled. Just a, what are you yeah. fucking apologizing for then? I didn't even know that you didn't like the party. I thought, who cares? I wonder if she even heard. Oh, she did because she said later, like, but it's like a non issue. It's just that like a, was a whatever. Non-issue. Yeah. You know what she's upset yep. about. She's not upset about the boring comment. But what bugs me is they keep leaning on, like, Jessel throws it in there too. It's like, well, Abe was laughing too. Rewatch the scene. Abe was, was not- awkward laughing. Yeah. He was trying to diffuse the situation and clearly was like tiptoeing the line between, I want to be polite to your friends. I don't want to come off like I'm flirting back. Right. Like he's in a very weird spot, but they keep highlighting. He was laughing too. It's like, don't I bring like, Abe into it. I like what Aaron Aaron's response. She could have easily said, when I talked to my husband about it, he was uncomfortable. She didn't there. do that. Right. Which I'm actually thankful that she didn't because that immediately kind of throws him under the bus. Then it makes it really awkward. It's already going to be a little awkward between Britt and Abe, but she, she kept her herself. cool. Okay, she didn't really kind of like explode. She was very confused. All of us were very confused. I think most of the people sitting at that table were confused. And she kind of kept to that. She didn't allow it to get out of hand quickly, which we usually see. And then it boils over into like 15 other things. And then you're bitching about something that happened four or five weeks ago that's completely unrelated. Kept it on point. Had Bryn kind of try to understand where Aaron was coming from. And that's where we left it. So I think it was nice to see them eventually get to a resolution, which is something that I like seeing in this show specifically versus others. They're good at doing that in this show. They're good at working through the shit quickly, which is such a relief because we can be on to the next thing. I'm not saying I don't want drama. I'm saying I don't want repetitive drama. But this is the kind of shit that bugs me with Sai because as they're having the conversation, she calls the waiter over to order. It's like, dude... She's like, I just, I have to eat. I have to eat. So like, fucking leave annoying. the food Do you have a alone. tapeworm? Like, what's and going on? Like, look, and people had comments when we commented on the food thing. Like, you don't know what you went through. About, like, okay, I respect that. But at the same time, you don't have to keep bringing food into it. It's not a fun trope. It's annoying. And it's really rude. Like, these two are actually having a conversation in which they can come to a resolution. Finally. They're going to squash it. They're this close. They're this close. Just wait. That's really rude. You're interrupting. Well, it comes down to Sai not giving a shit. She really does That's doesn't. really all it is. Like, yes, you can say you don't know what she went through, and that's fine. Like, I get it. We don't know what she went through. But in this moment, she does not care yeah, that's that Aaron and Bryn are talking about something that they're both kind of feeling strongly about. Sai doesn't give a shit about it. So why would she not cut them off by telling the but waiter to come over is me just... i'm selfish as shit because sure. she's like, i don't care i'm hungry yep. i i i it's like a thousand oh, percent it's about them right now yep. like sh- you are in a friend group you have to sit there let them either work through it or storm out like yep. that's what we do we either storm off or we work through it we're gonna get to one of those two but let it happen to the point that even brin's like sigh just knock it off like we're almost done and they come to some ter- like form of agreement i guess and brin I love that she goes, I was trying to do like a Larry David bit. I was like, oh, all right, well okay. done. Well yeah, exactly. That's what she does, though. Like, yeah. she kind of annoys you, and then she makes a little joke like that, and you're like, okay, move right back up. Yeah. You're right and, in the middle again. And Aaron knows that, like, it wasn't malicious intent, and I think anybody can watch it. Nobody actually thinks that Bryn was trying to fuck No, me. not even remotely. That didn't come across that way. We know she was, I think she was uncomfortable and really stoned, and that's why she kept flirting yeah. with him at the party. But they squash it. We can move forward from it. But I like that they're like, you know what? We're on this healing journey at the table. Let's fix everybody's shit. Jenna, what's up? Uh, In regards to, you know, flying coach or going down early to get your tan. Not sharing intimate details about your life with your group of friends. And I think that's the root of it. I don't think that anybody there actually cares that she flew early. I don't think they care that she took business class instead of coach. I think this is just the prime example to say, you do not share things with us. And when we address it, you give us excuses instead of telling us what's going on. Why are you the way right. that you are? Why do you tick this way? Like, we've all been open. Why can't you do the same for us? It's, I mean, it's a reasonable thing to ask. Now, again, we have to keep in mind, we're still very early on. They're not really friends. They don't haven't known each other that long. Jenna already admitted that she has a hard time breaking into groups of friends. She's never been on a girl's trip before. This is her first official one, blah, 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 all these excuses. Some of them are real. Some of them make sense to me. But I got to ask you, do you think now, based off of the episode that we just watched, now we get a little bit out of Jenna, floodgates open? No. 
You don't think so? No, I think it's I think still going to take time. I for think her. there's some trickling coming out, but I think it's it's going to be a little uncontrolled. I think she's going to break down certain be times. Spurts. Yeah, there's going to be like random spurts where she's in the middle of a conversation and something comes out and then she breaks down. Well, I think that's understandable too. And we finally get her to open up to the group. We've gotten a little bit in confessionals about her mother having Asperger's, her not knowing that until she was in her 40s. But we haven't gotten into the dynamic of what her childhood house was like. And in this scene, we finally do, where she's talking about, you know, we weren't allowed to make noise. We weren't allowed to play. We weren't allowed to talk. There was no affection. There was no anything. There was no emotion in my household. I don't know how to share. I don't, like, I'm used to deflecting, doing my own thing, and not talking about it. All of you want to talk about everything all the time, and you can see her getting physically uncomfortable, but she pushes forward, and I like that she actually shares here the funny thing is, going back a little bit, when Bryn's like, I shared with you at the like Thanksgiving or Friendsgiving, you could have shared then, and they do a really great edit. That was a great edit. force it in. And yep. It's like she shares that really traumatic story about growing up and having neglected parents and things like that, and they like shoehorn in, yeah, my real name's Judith, and everyone's like, what the hell? I was like, that's a great edit. Nice job. <laughs> Read the fucking room, lady. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice job, production. But the group responds pretty well to her opening up. and Which is all they really wanted. Once she started it. to open up and she said a couple of things. Like, at the end of the day, Jenna is very intelligent. Yeah. She's very pointed. And she knows what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. And she's able to convey, even if she doesn't feel like she is, she's able to convey her emotions and how she feels about certain things pretty well to, you know, relatively speaking, a group of strangers. Yeah. And she did a good job. And within the first, like, two or three sentences, you had people like Jessa leaning over and Bryn leaving, uh, leaning over saying... All right, no, I get that. You, If you just said that up front, we would have understood and we would have moved on right away. Happy you said it now. Us, the viewer, happy you said it now because we don't want these types of things to boil over and boil over because then it becomes a sticking point and we have to talk about it every fucking week. We can try to move on and see if she does better and if she goes back to her shell, we have an issue. But I think that they were really thankful about it and it was good because it really didn't drag on too long. Like That's mm -hmm. the main thing. So many of these shows just fucking drag on for way too long Roni seems to get it right. They, and I don't know if it's the group of girls. I don't know if it's production. I don't know if it's editing. Whatever the fuck it is, it's working. Yep, it, it it, the resolutions come rather quickly. They force situations that make sure that you have to face things that you did right away, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And it's over with. And we're good. That's all we need. Uh, it's, That's all we want. It's, it's, a a working, it's a working formula. But the next person to speak up is Jessel. Because... The boy, have we been waiting for this. Oh, boy, have we. And we got absolutely nothing. But everyone's kind of highlighting the fact that, all right, finally Jenna shared her backstory. And they're like, we've heard everyone's backstory, except, well, I guess, Jess, we haven't really heard yours. And she starts going into it. She's like, well, my parents are actually from Africa. They were forced out of Africa. And then my uncles moved to Paris to be photographers and lived on benches and had a really hard struggle making it there. And, like, they got in with some famous photographer, I guess. They got noticed by... Really cool backstory for her uncles. Sick backstory for your uncles. Then the only traumatic thing that she shares about her life was that she moved to New York at 22 and took on an internship in which she unpacked boxes for hours. I didn't get it. At first, I was actually a little annoyed because they did the yada, 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 wrap it up thing mm. that, that, that production usually does. And it was kind of early on. And I wanted to hear Jessel's story. We've been talking about it for weeks. When are we going to get Jessel's story? There's got to be something in there. Maybe we'll feel a little bit better. Maybe we'll understand her a little bit better. They started the wrap it up thing very quickly. And I'm like, yo, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's, let's see some things. And then she started getting into the uncles and stuff. And then it wrapped up even quicker. And I'm like, yeah, no, you just talked about your fucking family history for 25 minutes and then for the last two minutes you talked about how you took an internship in new york and had to go across the pond yeah but we didn't hear about your struggle Nothing. we didn't hear anything about it. and this is where and again i will eat my words and i'll be the first one to say not that we're wrong but like we're sorry There's i no guess fucking struggle but like that's the thing it's like are you we're reaching a weird point now where it's like i don't want to say she didn't struggle because i do not know i we don't know because we haven't heard but is she trying to relate to the rest of the group that has this really traumatic backstory? She doesn't want to seem boring. And again, I'll eat my words if I'm wrong. I'm not trying to be a dick about this. I'm just speculating with what we've been given. It's like, okay, the one time you had a chance to really share, we heard about your uncles who had a tough backstory. Yep. But we heard about you. It doesn't pass down genetically. No, we, we heard that you had an internship in New York City. Everybody hates their first London. job. Get over it, lady. Dude, like, I shredded paper. 
for five to eight hours a day during one off season when I played professional baseball for my uncle's <laughs> old pretty good oil company. It. You got it, the arms for it, buddy. Bro, when I tell you, and my my uncle is like old school as shit, doesn't trust anybody. By the way, these are forms and documents from like 1960 for oil field equipment. Nobody needs this stuff. No one's looking into it. It's not like if someone uncovers something, they can like steal their money. And they had an office-sized shredder, not an industrial one, like something you would have at a home office. And I had to sit there with boxes from 1960 and shred this shit for five to seven hours a day, five to eight, sorry. And if you weren't paying attention and just shoving papers in, if it got clogged and I was watching like Netflix on my phone, I would turn around and this thing would shoot it like confetti all over the office. Now that explains a lot. Yep. That Why you get so them. emotional when you talk about these things. I get it. It's the shredding paper. <laughs> shredding it's paper. It's like shredding your heart every time you watch yeah. one of these shows. God damn it. But I hope we get more from her. We see in the scenes from next week that Cy presses her about the fact that she didn't go into her backstory at all. So I think that we're going to reach a but breaking point. that's okay. Point like, it. if there's nothing fucking there, then there's nothing there. We got, Aaron's, we got Aaron's backstory in a minute and 30 flat. And it's great. And it was cool. Yeah. It was, my parents grew up pretty wealthy in real estate. I kind of just did what they do. Boom, done. See you later. Great. Sick. Awesome. Good for you. Great. Yep. That's awesome. We know we know what you're about, and you share so much on screen that we're good. Yep. That's it. That's all we need. That's all we need. We but don't she keeps need. sidestepping it, so we'll, we'll see what happens with it. But on their way back, we get a little WAP talk, um, which is hysterical that Aaron does not know what a WAP is, and does not like the word. Is not I mean, I don't like the, the fucking term. word, if we're being honest, but... I like the song's a bop, but the I will bop, say sure. this. The edited version is infinitely worse than the unedited version. What's the edited version say? Wet and gushy. Oh, <laughs> Instead of God. wet ass pussy. It's wet and gushy. Yeah. I, I, I actually didn't know that Aaron... One, I didn't know Aaron was 35. So she said she was 35. I'm like, all right, you're not old. Nope, like, that would you be... should know the song. But yeah, I mean, like, as a 32-year-old white man, I can't be saying... Wet ass pussy all the time or wop? No, I, no. We, we just, can only say it in. When I just said that, song. you made a face immediately. So yeah, yeah you can't it just, say <laughs> it. it. It rubs you the wrong way. It's just yeah, weird. I didn't like it. So no, we can't do that. that. Just as guys, we we can't be sitting down here talking about talking that about but, wops. But it was really funny that she's like completely disconnected from the whole thing. She has uh, yeah. no idea. Didn't even like it. And then she was like, "Is it like a wet ass and a pussy?" <laughs> that paints a much much it's worse picture. Worse. Yeah, it's that. That was the guy on the airplane. But <laughs> that was the guy on the airplane or girl. We don't know. Yeah, oh, that's we have true. no idea. That's true. But the next morning, everybody wakes up. We're having breakfast. And this is the scene in which I started to believe more so that Jenna did not fly down there early because of the coach versus business class thing. I do think that was a small part of it. But she's genuinely insecure. And like you see these women coming out to the table and they're all wearing bathing suits. And yeah, they're all gorgeous i would be self-conscious in a bathing suit around them as well mm -hmm. that being said jenna's beautiful and i like the skin that she showed on her leg like it doesn't look bad and i, I think it's more of an insecurity thing sure which, yeah i mean, I mean if she's been dealing with it her entire life i'm sure it's it's take it takes its toll no matter what it sure. looks like i'm sure but i agree i mean she the way that she shares and she always talks about how beautiful all the other women are. Like, you can tell what her insecurity is. Yeah. So I do, I, I genuinely believed that she did go down there early so that she could feel, one, socially comfortable. Two, she's not just getting, like, she's not, meaning she's not getting thrown right into the girls' trip. She gets some time to kind of decompress, I relax like a little that. bit. That's a really good call. That's part of it. Yeah. And then the other part of it is, like, yeah, I kind of take her for her word. If she says that her skin looks better to her when she gets a little bit of a tan, makes sense. She walked into the, par the party the first night in a nice dress and felt really confident. Obviously, she yeah. got torn down immediately. And then, yeah, I think a nice little byproduct of the whole thing is that she didn't have to fly coach. But Jenna doesn't really, I, I don't know. I, I don't read too far into the fact that she doesn't ever want to fly coach. No, I, I can see her flying coach. You have the money and the finances yeah. to not have to do it. Sure. Like, why would you? But it's diarrhea she's, back there. <laughs> she's clearly dealing with a lot because she sits down. The, she got emotional the night before after opening up. Yep. She sits down at the table. She's like, yeah, I, I meditated this morning and immediately gets emotional again. It's like, oh, and I think that's to your point about are the floodgates opening. I don't think the floodgates are opening again, but I do think that she's now like, because I know from personal experience when I finally like tapped into my emotions a little bit, just a little bit for the first time when I was like 28, 
it would just pop up random. Like, oh god, like why am I watching a Folgers commercial and crying? Like, what the fuck? Like, so you can see it start to, I, I guess, start to feel more and start to be more open about it. So I like that part. What I was not expecting at all was side to dive in about her mom. Yeah, and when I tell you, sobbing at this part when she was talking about growing up with her mom and noticing a change when she was about 16 years old and trying to help as much as she could, but eventually it just got too much to handle and she just watched her mom kind of spiral to the point where she died alone in a park bench. And, you know, and I'm not going to get into it too much because you can go listen to my episode talking about all this if you want to, but as a sober person and as a father of a child that was only two when I got clean and sober, to see somebody that went through it as you know a 16 year old into her adulthood and what she suffered through and how she was affected by it just sitting on my couch watching this knowing that i sidestepped that and by getting my shit together like poppy doesn't have to know that literally like sobbing i texted dev and just said fucking sigh god damn it but in a good way like good for you sigh thank you for sharing with all of us because i think that i don't know if she knows how much that's going to resonate with people, me included, like it hit me right in the heart. Yeah. And I don't think most people on these shows, I feel like those real moments, they don't realize at the time they're just talking about their own experience and they're, you know, feeling comfortable in the moment and they decide to share with who they're around with, which is helpful to not only those women, but also the people who are watching. I half expected Jessel to chime in and be like, my, my uncle, Park, park bench <laughs> in Paris. Uh, he almost, you know, the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yep, me too. I saw that. I was wasn't born yet, but I, I, I definitely saw it. Definitely, I was witness to it. That would have been. By the way, my name's not really Jessel. It's uh, it's, it's Judith. <laughs> Jesselica. <laughs> Judith. But the one thing that she ended it with, and this one was like the the perfect cherry on top, was she says my mom was not a bad person. That was not my mom, and I was like. Fuck yeah. I was like, thank you for saying that. That's the biggest thing you can say in that moment because so many people paint this this stigmatized picture of people that use drugs or get caught up in alcoholism or addiction, all those things, and know that these people are not bad people. They just went down a really bad path. So yeah. for her to say that on TV, it meant the world to me, and that's why Sai, although I do think she's a dick, I also really like Sai. It's a very love-hate relationship, but let's keep moving forward. But let's finish it up. Let's get to uh, the lunch scene at the end, and uh, we dive into Bryn's dating life and she has an exhausting dating life. She dates three times a day for the entire summer. Coffee, lunch, dinner. That's a, or was it lunch, drinks, dinner? Must be nice to not have a fucking job. I wonder what she does. What no does she idea. Do? I, and this has been a lot of speculation on, on Instagram. And I think Tinder swindler, like, I don't know got, what's going on. Somebody got blocked because they questioned it. And like alluded to her being an escort or something. We are not saying. I, I'm like, yeah, I would. I'm not going that far. No, but not I am saying kind of, that. I don't like, think that's true in, in the she slightest. Could just, and we know that she doesn't have family money, so it could just be she's being funded by one of her ex fiancés, and he's just paying for things so that she's. But here's the thing, Bravo. Just show us what she does, or Bryn should tell us what you do. So we at least I don't I do not. That's the know. thing though. When they do that and they're not showing us what she does, and she's not telling us what she does. What are we supposed to do? We just speculate. We have to speculate. We, sit here we and have speculate. to think maybe not the worst. We don't have to go to Marlowe standards and start digging at her like that. No, no, no. We have to sit back and we have to think, logically speaking, what does she do? And that that's my first thought is one of her ex fiancés is just funding her life, keeping her afloat, making sure that she's happy so that maybe one day What's his name? We'll actually Edwin? get married. Who the fuck cares? Ed, the car guy? Yeah. Yeah, sure. He just looks like an Edwin. He just like met on twin, it's not a, Tinder beta. Windler? Windler. <laughs> yeah, because I wanted to do yeah, I, I already said Tinder swindler. I think those what words just got mad. That's going to bug me. Uh, I don't know. It it's matter. not Edwin, but he looks like an Edwin. He looks like an Edwin. Um, uh, it's something like more European than Edwin, that. But. Edwin Cunningham the third. Not that European. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, that's what I think when I see her when she talks about this in her life. It's like, okay. That's wild. Yeah. That's fucking exhausting. It sounds exhausting. Yeah. But she said she was husband hunting. And then she starts talking about freezing her eggs and, you know, or versus freezing her embryos and says that the doctor that she went to said, if you do the embryos, it's a much more viable situation. If you were to fertilize some embryos with somebody, who would it be? Go through your phone right now. Yeah. Which I also thought, I was like, I don't 
I don't know. I'm not saying that it didn't happen, but like I, uh, we've seen some doctors on Bravo. That we have seen some. Would absolutely doctors. do that. We, I'm not going to say it didn't happen because that's rude. And I think Drew and Ralph's uh, oh, marriage Dr. counselor, Ken, that dude, Doctor Ken, Ken would is like thousand percent your fault. But I think the main point is that it's irrelevant. Yeah. Like in this moment, Aaron, don't say anything. You guys are cool now. It doesn't matter if she's embellishing the story a little bit. It's a very touchy subject. And maybe by embellishing it a little bit, it makes her feel better about this journey she's about to embark on. That's really fucking scary and expensive. And she's doing it alone. So instead of taking that moment to be like, that's pretty fucking weird, just bite your tongue. But at the same time, it's pretty fucking weird. That's why I love this group, though, because they make up. And then they immediately like, that's fucking weird. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's exactly what I want, though. Too. It's yeah. great. And you know why? Because you know me. In the past, I would have been like, that's fucking annoying. Just let her talk. But because the resolution is so fast yeah. now, give me the drama. I know. Because we're going to wrap it up quickly. And we get that at the end of the episode. Aaron goes to side and says, I need a timeout. I need a breather. I'm going to like stay in tonight. I'm going to lay low. And I was like, damn it. Now it's going to turn into this thing with Aaron. They're not going to talk about it. It's going to be a whole thing. It's going to drag on. No. Immediately goes to Aaron's bathroom. I'm like, fuck yes. Let's let's rip the band You know what Bravo could have easily done is push that off to the next episode. They could have. they didn't. Because they're getting smarter. They're getting smarter. I I, I do not want to give Bravo too much AI is getting self-aware. Oh. No, I'm kidding. You think AI actually edits these things? That would be really scary only because we are truly fucked if AI can pick out what we as an audience would like more on it. I just poked myself in the eye. Just listen to like a um, hundred hours of Brav Bros podcasting just to see. Oh, that you think that Bravo editing based it off of Brav Bros podcast yeah. and they plug that into the AI? It's the most important thing in Bravo world. Us. That's Straight guys. <laughs> <laughs> I should put a disclaimer because we're going to get shit for that. I'm kidding. They know I'm kidding. Well, some people don't know I'm kidding. But. Oh, boy. But that takes us to A-Town, a.k.a. Atlanta, a.k.a. Roa, a.k.a. Reunion Season Part 2. We're wrapping up Atlanta. So we are officially through our first season of Atlanta now, which um, is going to be potentially the last season of this Atlanta before the reboot. So Everybody hates us. We ruined Atlanta. Yeah, you could just say that. Yeah. Ipso facto. It's our fault. It's our fault. So what are you going to do? But this reunion episode, I, I loved the first one for entertainment value. As far as content goes, I didn't feel like there was a lot to latch on to. More than enough this episode. So we have plenty to discuss. So let's dive right in. Yeah, I think the best part about wa- about last week's episode was Steele just trying his hardest to get some information to talk about that last episode. You guys don't you know. Just, there was so much cut out because it's just steel, like starting and then stopping. Yeah, like, that doesn't. I don't even know where the fuck. I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> it's just nothing. I'm trying so hard, and I'm like, dude, it's fine. They were yelling over each other. There was no real information. It doesn't I matter. Care. I know you care. So I try. I w- I should have kept some of the cuts in there just so you could hear me start a sentence, stop mid sentence, dead air for thirty seconds, and shooter going, dude, it's fine, and me going, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but we got here. But we start out with Courtney once again. Courtney, I I do not like her at all. Like I I thought she was good for the season at the time. Looking back now and after her performance in the reunion, she's she's brutal. But she's speaking on Ralph's behalf to Andy, and I thought that was crazy. Let's not forget. Wild. It. It's insane. They've known each other for months. Why did it take everybody on this fucking show to say what we've been saying since day one? This is weird. You've known each other for three days. You're not really cousins. Everybody was so sweet and happy about it. Well, maybe not Kenya, but everybody else was fine about it. They were like, yeah, it's your cousin. It's your cousin. Yeah, all right, cousin. What's going on? We were livid this entire season. Because it made no sense. Finally, at the reunion, now that something bad happened and there's a falling out between Drew and Courtney, everybody's like, you've known each other for a day. It's Where the fuck did you get that? But like, brav bros. Damn right, but like seriously, it makes no sense to me that she's this emotionally involved in the whole thing until we get to my theory, which we're going to talk about in a little while. But the fact that she can sit there after saying what she she said some shit about Drew's kids that happened. We heard her say that's why she wanted to put up for or she wanted Ralph to adopt the kids so she could go off to a gay lover relationship and he could pay all the bills, which is a terrible thing to say. And also. She doubles down and says, you single-handedly destroyed your kids. We have watched this season. We have watched intently this season. You can slight Drew for a lot of things. Maybe she's a liar. 
Maybe she hooked up on the side. Maybe she had an affair. You can point at all those things. What you cannot say is that, one, she's a bad mom. Two, that she did not try to be a better wife, to help the marriage, to help Ralph. Like, those things are very apparent to the viewer. We watched it. We watched Ralph not give a fuck. So when Courtney is out there reciting all of this nonsense, it's just bullshit, and she's yelling to try to get her point across, and she's trying to cut Drew off, you are clearly just repeating the shit that Ralph has put inside of your ear, because you would have no basis for this stuff. You just entered the scene. You have no ground to stand on. The only other thing that I could possibly comprehend is Courtney's just trying to get a voice in the reunion, because it's a huge change-up from the Courtney that we saw the entire season. Oh my god, night day. The whole season... And I don't think all of that is based off of just Drew and Ralph's relationship. I don't think that she was playing nice at certain times. I think she was just trying to get her footing. Every time that we said Courtney did something good, it was something that she did a little bit different. She was very timid at the beginning. We didn't know what she was going to do. And then she started to get a voice, get a voice, get a voice. And now it's fucking culminating at this point times 50. Yeah. She just jumped off as soon as she gets on set. She's screaming. It was really fucking funny because when she walked on set last week, when we were watching last week's episode... Everybody on the right side of the field was very nice. Marlo, Sonya, hey, what's going on, girl? How are you doing? Whatever. As soon as Courtney starts up, they're fucking traumatized. They have nothing to say. Everyone's shocked by what she's saying. It was wild. It made no sense. And the only thing that I can think of is maybe she's trying to get a voice and she's trying to get back for next year. Maybe she thinks that she can kind of drive a wedge in there and then we have to bring Courtney back next year because this is fucking volatile. It's like, no. There's good drama then on there's shows, ridiculous and drama. then there's whatever the fuck this was, Thank and you. that has no space on any TV show. So I think she just kind of wrote her own little uh, death card there. See you later. But my thing, and this really bugged me for the entirety of the episode until Kenya finally speaks up, nobody goes to bat for Drew. And I understand no. that she has burned a lot of bridges, and that's her own fault. But this is also a discussion about morals, about ethics, about integrity like she's getting dragged for a lot of things that are not correct it's, it's coming okay. from a party that we don't know this chick just entered the scene yeah and if she just kept it on point and she just kept saying you were cheating on ralph with ty you leave it at that you start bringing the kids in none of these women stand up and say that's why Keep i was fucking it's kids fucking out of it weird it's rule number one rule number one rule number one it's the golden rule sonya finally like on the side says let's leave the kids out of it marlo even says it on her couch like but it takes a while to get nobody there. O- nobody talks over them that's to do exactly that which is it. crazy because last week and any other reunion clip that i've seen from atlanta most of the time it's a lot of people screaming over each other yeah and that's re- a lot of reunions are like that too but now this is the moment where everybody just stays quiet and they're just making faces like whoa like what the it. fuck's going on like I, it felt weird it to me. the point where i'm wondering why everybody's not jumping in and, and trying to save drew do they all hate drew do they think that she did cheat do they think that ralph is right like there's a lot of thoughts going through my head because nobody's supporting her i get and the- i don't know what to think I get the vibe from some of them, like Candy. I don't think that she's anti-Ralph. I think that she's buying a little bit of what he's selling. I think that there's some speculation. I think there's some people leaning. I'm not saying they're Team Ralph and Courtney, but I, I do not think they're Team Drew. And I think that by riding that middle line, they're just staying silent. But instead, it's not even so much about defending Drew. It's about defending anybody against what this chick is saying to her. Yeah. It, it's, it's unwarranted. It yep. was not necessary. But... We find out that Sheree mysteriously got some text messages dropped in a manila folder on her front porch out of nowhere. Like, who could have gotten these private texts between Ty and Drew? Like, let's really think about this. Who would have access to that? Ralph. Who would he give it to? Courtney. Who would drop it off? Probably Courtney. She probably, like, slithered up to the door and, like, snuck it in there. But we get these texts between Ty and Drew, and Kenya reads through them, and she says there's nothing incriminating here. Some other women read through it, and they, you know, it it could be a little too much. I, I firmly believe that they hooked up. I, I And there's nothing, well, obviously, if it's a marital issue, there's something wrong with it. It's a problem. But overall, that's what I believe. I, I do think that Drew and Ty hooked up. I think they ha- carried on some sort of relationship. But I don't understand how that's any different than what Ralph was doing. We know that Ralph was being shady in the background. He has been checked out of that marriage for a long time. The Ty thing did not come up until after. After that marriage counseling scene with Dr. Ken. Right, this season. That scene with Dr. Ken, Ralph was done. He's he'd moved done. out. 
He's comfortable not living in the same bedroom with her anymore. He's talking. He's making jokes about divorce. Like, Dude. he's done. He's done. He was fully out of that fucking relationship. I don't fault Drew for wanting to maybe tie show me a little bit of attention. She wants to do this or that or whatever. She might regret it because obviously things are blowing up. But Ralph needed something to sink his teeth into for this divorce. You can't just say, you know, we just lost our spark and we're done here. We're just going to move on and I'm pretty much checked out and I'm not going to help for our marriage anymore for the sake of our kids. Then you look like a huge dick. Either way, he looks like a dick. But in his mind, he looks like a huge dick if he does that. He gets to sink his teeth into this whole infidelity where Drew is actually secretly a lesbian. And she loves the scene that she did in that movie. And she hooked up with LaToya a couple years ago. Tell me more about that so I can get some more details. She has a crush on Ty. Who's Ty? She was on the movie set. She plays in the WNBA. She went to her game. Like, There's a lot of things going on there. And again, Drew is not squeaky clean in all of this. I didn't say she was. No, I, I'm. I wasn't saying that you did say that she was. Oh, okay, my bad. Right? Yeah, no, we're good. Uh, no, we're, all right. I love you. We're good. <laughs> I love you. Too. Um, but no, that that's kind of where I am on all of this, and it's just crazy that, yeah, you kind of see somebody like Candy reading those text messages. She's like, Kenya, I don't talk to, like that to you, do I? I see, but it's that's like, my oh, point. Is this? Yeah. But is this recency bias? Is that why? Like, it's crazy I to think, me. I think this... Candy feels spurned because of the whole lying thing. Because Drew called her a liar. So she's just gonna I lean think into she's it. She's just gonna lean into it. Yeah, but that it sucks because if you break down who this man is, and we're gonna get into it, I promise you. I don't want to do it yet because there's still some more I want to chip away at before we just finish it with the Drew and Courtney stuff. But it's crazy to me that a group of women can watch as this man sits out there and says some really brutal things, gaslights the shit out of her the whole time, and no one says a word. They're letting Ralph get a word. And I think the fact that Bravo let Ralph come out there and have a platform at all is a fucking joke. I don't know about that. I thought it was brutal, honestly. I really, I did not care I think care for the it. way that it worked out was brutal, but the idea of Ralph coming out onto a reunion set, they still live together, they're getting a divorce, yeah, we, know, we know all the stories. For production, yeah. For production's sake... He's got to be out there. Yeah, I guess you're right. It's just, it rubbed me the wrong way, but we're going to get there. This is when we get the weird scene between Courtney and Ralph and the hug. That, to me, was the most damning evidence. The way that she put her hand like on his chest and neck, I was like, wait a minute. And I texted you because I did a little, a little video of me calling it out. I hinted at it last week, and I didn't firmly put my foot down and say what I'm about to say. Because I didn't want to. Because I was like, you know what? That could get me in a little bit of trouble. I want to make sure, like, I, I want to stand in my laurels here. Yeah. I want to make sure I get the evidence. When I saw that, I'm like, fuck this. I need to say something. So I flat out said it. When you see these two interact with each other, when you learn about the history, when they met, where she's from, Tampa, weird, all of the things start to add up a little bit. They're not really cousins. They're cousins through marriage, kind of, but still not even then. These two have 1,000% fucked. I have no doubt in my mind that these two banged. And you just see how they talk to each other. You see, he checks her out. He's standing there. One of our great listeners tagged it for us on Twitter, or X, and it shows his eye line. He's staring at her boobs. These two have been intimate, and no one can tell me differently. They could be hooked up to a goddamn lie detector test, and I would think that they're cheating the lie detector test because I get vibes. Yeah. The only thing I actually, I mean, I, I fully think that they fucked. Which is surprising. I'm on the same page as you. I know. Usually yeah, you're really weird. And I wasn't going to be the Thank contrarian on this one. Today. No, I actually do. I, I truly believe that they fucked. But the only other thing that I can think of is that there is some weird sexual tension in there. And Ralph is stringing her along and using her as a puppet. And Which acting could be like, hey, you know, like, maybe we could hook up at some point in time. But, you know, I'm still with Drew. She's still my wife. But I got to get through all this divorce shit. Like, maybe Courtney's just doing anything that Ralph wants her to do in order for them to be together. And then as soon as Ralph's out, Ralph's going to Vegas. Ralph's going to Vegas. For his IT convention. Yeah. <laughs> Check me out here. What a fucking Instagram story. Dude, the best that's the most thing damning I've... evidence I've ever seen. Check me out. I'm here at my IT convention. Check out my badge. I'm in Las Vegas at the Bellagio. Check me out. I'm going in here. Got a little meeting today. See you later. And he's like smiling there like, yeah, I did that. It's like, nah, dude, you planned that. That was that's totally a plan. A Nobody plan. fucking takes an Instagram nope. reel and says, I'm at an IT convention. And then shows All your right, fucking nerd. Badge. Yeah, yeah get out of here, dork. dude. Like, what? Fucking computer nerd. That was the most damning evidence of all to me. But we're not there yet because I want to highlight this one part. I think we're already there, right? No, because this is important to me. And I think it's important to a lot of people. Sonia sharing her story about the miscarriage oh. and being open with everybody watching this show, being open with the cast members on that stage. It just. I always like to make sure that we highlight this stuff because this is a super traumatic event. 
it's something that we got to witness in the finale. And then we're talking about it now. She's obviously pregnant again, but she goes through this traumatic experience. She was doing a commentating thing for a track event, lost so much blood that she nearly died. And she has an issue because everybody in the group reached out. Everyone checked on her. Everyone was making sure she was okay, except for Kenya. And I feel like Kenya sidestepped this one a little bit because she said, I promise that you did. I promise that I reached out. By the way, you look beautiful. You look great. You're glowing. And they kind of just like, all right, we're just going to move on. Mm -hmm. And she she got a get-out-of-jail-free card for a little bit. It gets thrown back at her later. But she did. She did a good job of sidestepping the fact that I don't think she called. I don't think she doubled down. No. And I and Sonia calls her out. It's really convenient that a lot of times you will do the right thing on camera at the charity event. You do the right thing. You're going to be the orator for me. You're going to be the auctioneer, all of that stuff. You You come in. And you get everybody riled up. You get people spending a lot of money. Great job. Looks great for you because it's on TV. Off camera, you're MIA. I firmly believe that to be true. Yeah. That is her MO to a T. Uh-huh. When and it I love that, her. like, it's, I mean, it's it's pretty crazy that Sonya went into great detail about what she was going through. I know. I loved it. And really. then at the very end, it's like, I'm at my most vulnerable right now talking about a really rough moment that I had in my life. Probably the worst moment in my entire life. And at the very end of it, I'm going to point out to Kenya, you didn't fucking call me. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> you fake girl. Like, yeah. no, you absolutely did not call me. And Kenya still had the audacity to lie her way out of it. It's like, yep. come on, man. Read yep. the room. And the only other thing that happened was Candy and Marlo are going to continue to be cordial as they have been, which is fine. Sure. Now, Great. Let's do it. If neither of you were on the show next year, it doesn't matter. No, but let's let's do it. Because I've been biting my tongue. I I hated I hated every second of this man being on the stage. I didn't think he belonged there. I think it's bullshit that he got a platform to speak out. When we watched Drew get dragged the entire season by her husband, a guy that didn't give a fuck, a guy that could care less about her thoughts and feelings, and he puts her down all the time. Now we're going to give him the chance to talk his way out of this because Drew might have had an affair with Ty or with... Latoya. So Ralph comes out to the stage and he acts so fucking calm. He acts like a Ralph that we have not seen at all. Not one time have we seen this Ralph when it's him and Drew in their house. The only time that we see this Ralph is at the brunch, when he's getting ready for the brunch, when he's doing things to serve himself, to make himself look good. Now his tone of voice gets more relaxed. His demeanor gets more relaxed and he uses words intentionally. He uses sentences intentionally that talk about family, he talks about kids, and he uses emotionally charged words to try to spin a narrative that he's more emotionally intelligent, he's a smarter person, and he understands better than Drew. And that is the epitome of a fuckboy. This is Captain Fuckboy of the All-Star Fuckboy team, and I'm going to call it out as we go. But Drew breaks out another another fruit. She, she apparently brought a whole fruit basket. She gave a plum to Courtney and gives a peach to Ralph, and I agreed here. Like, Ralph clearly wants his fucking moment, his so here's your peach. fucking tux. Yeah, and your dumbass tux. You look like shit. You've looked like shit all season. Yep. The guy doesn't look good. He looks bloated all the time. It looks like he <laughs> ate Taco Bell all the time, and he's trying to hold in a fart. Maybe he was the guy on the airplane. Well, I mean, he's been sleeping in, like, a twin-sized bed for months. He's been sleeping now. in a bunk bed. <laughs> but he's not at fault. You moved out. Uh, nope, not yet. <laughs> but they say that the divorce is in mediation because they both raced to go file and so now they're kind of at a standstill where the lawyers are trying to work it all out whatever here's my problem and this is like where the gaslighting comes in Andy's asking questions that could be answered by either drew or ralph ralph now he's like would you like to answer drew i, w- I want you to be able to talk would you like to answer where, who's that who the fuck are you because all season you would have answered for her or if she gave an answer you would have talked over her and told her she was being emotional stupid doesn't get it or you would have sided with the people talking shit on her. But now that you're on stage with Andy Cohen, now you're going to be like, what, you want to talk, honey? I, I want to hear what you have to say. I respect your thoughts and feelings. Why don't you tell me what you think? And that's where the infidelity comes into question. And Andy asks Ralph, were you faithful? And he doesn't answer immediately. Yep. He kind of sidesteps and goes, oh, and he said, were you faithful? Yes or no? He goes, yes, absolutely. No, you weren't. No, you absolutely weren't. There is multiple occasions in which you stepped out we've seen evidence we see evidence on stage today 
He immediately goes back at Drew and says, well, what about Ty? And this is what drives me nuts is why is the Ty thing? Why does that supersede all of the shit that we've heard, all of the rumors, all of the proof, all of that we've seen this season? Why is this more important to the storyline than all of the shit we've watched this man put her through? I don't know. The only thing that goes through my mind is he was okay being in a marriage that didn't fucking work at all. And the minute that infidelity came up, that's when he had an issue. Now, well, now he has a way out. He has a way out. Exactly. He had a way out. It's just fucking mind boggling to me that this man went to marriage counseling and acted like an absolute piece of shit dickhead. Yep. For that full hour and multiple other hours when they went to go see Dr. Ken. And now he's up on stage acting like the perfect husband. Yeah. Talking about how much he loves his wife and he just wants her to be happy. How many times did he say that? fucking 20 maybe at more at least like who are you fooling man like do you not realize like that's gotta be the dumbest thing in the world like let i want to i want to look at it from a different direction and say okay let's say that we're ralph and we're just trying to drum up some sort of like idea to look better and paint myself in a different light and help out the cause you do not sit there and act like you're the perfect husband when there's fucking cameras rolling for three years showing you be a piece of shit dickhead to your wife Especially, not specifically, but that scene where Drew's talking about how Courtney called her a bitch and you went into whole, the whole thing and then tore down her whole family and then started yelling at her sister and got through all this fucking bullshit. How do you not realize that there's so much evidence of you being a terrible person and your plan is to come into the reunion and act like the perfect husband? Are you the dumbest fucking person in the world? That tells you exactly who he is. And here it is. Like, this is a gaslighting, manipulative asshole this is the problem with dudes all over the world they paint other guys in a bad light because this guy found an out because he found a way to get out of his marriage because there's questions about drew being faithful to him he immediately takes the approach of i'm the victim now watch me spin this watch me go out here and spin this narrative he sits there and he uses like i said earlier i love my wife so much i want her to be happy i want the kids to get through this okay you don't give a fuck about the kids you made that evident throughout the show you're too busy grinding dude you're out there grinding every day you're grinding you're at your it convention in vegas meanwhile you belittle your wife in front of the world you talk her down you agree with people talking shit on her you're fucking your cousin you are literally the epitome of a piece of shit and the fact that he can sit up on that stage and talk to andy and address the rest of the cast and address us the audience and take no accountability and try to act like he's this little puppy dog that got wronged by his wife he's been nothing but supportive he's been nothing but there for her. he's been nothing Nothing but talking her up left and right. No, you haven't. Not once did we see that behind closed doors. All you've done is break her apart, tear her down while she's actively trying to fix it. I'm not saying Drew's free and clear. There might be some infidelity. There might be an affair there. That's fucked too. Not trying to take away from that. But the fact that this cast can sit by and let him talk, the fact that we have to sit there and watch as a huge piece of shit tries to vindicate himself from all of the wrongdoings that he's done to the point where there's a text message with a girl with a huge ass saying, when are you going to bring that dick back, Ralph? And that's thrown back at Drew. Well, I don't the think it's text message. I don't think it said Ralph in the text message. It was his phone number. I know, but... It doesn't it, yeah. matter. The fact that he can sit there and take the stance and just break this woman down even more. We've watched her struggle through this whole season, just to hold on to the marriage. And I'm not the biggest Drew fan, but Jesus Christ, why does this dickhead get a platform? He is a fuckboy. This is what they do. They find an inch, they take a mile because they spin it, they emotionally manipulate, they turn words into different meanings, and they make the other person feel crazy. And in this instant, somebody you've been married to for eight fucking years, years that you have children with you have the fucking nerve and audacity on a national stage to talk shit about her to break her down and try to make her seem crazy to make yourself come out of this looking better her kids are going to see this your kids are going to see this if you actually gave a fuck you would bite your tongue you would understand that this is a divorce you're both wrong maybe let's go with that instead of she's the problem maybe you're both the problem but don't go out there and tear a woman down in front of all of us, in front of six other women that don't say shit about it until Kenya finally says something when everyone else leaves the stage, it 
it's such a bad look overall. I, I hated that I had to sit there and watch it. I hate that Ralph gets to walk away from that stage feeling like he came out the winner because nobody really went after him. And that's fucking ridiculous because he then discredits Drew, who's sitting there trying to talk, and he gaslights her by going, whoa, 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 I, I want to hear you. I want to talk to you. No, you haven't all year. You haven't given her the time of day this whole fucking year. So now it's cool? Why? Because you're sitting next to Andy Cohen, there's a camera in your face, you're wearing a $2 tux, you look like a dickhead, and you're going to try to spin the narrative that you're a good dude when, in fact, you are a cousin fucking piece of shit. Feel better? Oh, my God. I feel like I just took a big shit on an airplane. <laughs> I don't even understand why Ralph went on the fucking reunion to begin with. There's no winning in that situation. Well, you said you're glad he did. Oh, yeah. From a production standpoint, I'm glad he did. Otherwise, we would have had a shitty second half of the reunion. Probably more of the first. Him going on stage and doing that, to talk about. it gives us something to talk about, and that's the only thing I'm really interested in as like, far as this goes. But How do you make comments like, I was getting BJs all over the world, and then when you're called Sounds out, sick. you're like, I was being silly. I, I was being, being silly. silly. It was a goof. Guys, it was a goof. <laughs> it was a goof. I was just, the blowjobs were fake. Like, dude, you All over the shit. world. But that's my point Fucking about the awesome. gaslighting. You know that there's been conversations off camera where she has addressed it, and he's actually been like, either I'm sorry or they got in an argument, but now yeah. he's cool, calm, and collected. You know what, I mean, the thing that sucks the most is nobody prepped Drew for what Ralph could have done. And this is, I don't know, because the fact that Drew got up and did a fucking performance after all of this is Dude, wild to really, me. It makes no sense That to me. needs to happen on every reunion. Oh, yeah, please do. Please do that. I need Erica, <laughs> I need Erica Jane broken down and then go up and do a performance right now. Everybody. Like, I need that every Whoever's fucking Whoever's the most reunion. slighted yes. needs to sing a song to the offendee, it's like a fa- uh, it's like a fan- fantasy football punishment. That's exactly like you, gotta, you what lost. You lost this reunion. You lost the reunion. Get up on stage. You got to do an hour of comedy. I but love that. It. Would be awesome. I just don't really know how it works, and I, I think that's the thing that sucks the most. Is one, and you can kind of tie it together. Drew does not get any support on stage. Nobody is supporting her doing during all of that. Which all the gaslighting, crazy. which is wild. Even if you don't like her, Ralph like, had a game plan going into this. It, was it a good one? No. I mean, we can see through that pretty easily. It's not everybody he's can see through that. Dumb and thinks he's smart. Yes, it, it, that's exactly what it is. He thinks he's smart and he's a fucking idiot. Yes. Him going into it with a game plan and Drew not going into it with any game plan. Her game plan was here's a peach, and as soon as he started gaslighting her, she fell for it. I know. Right away, and it sucked to watch, but nobody helped her out. Nobody helped her beforehand. Allison, her sister, did not take her aside and say, "Do not let that man trigger you." Well, even do if not she let did, like that. she may have, but like maybe, once maybe, you're on stage but alone, like, but that's the thing. She's on stage with no support. Yeah, exactly. I think that's part of it. It just sucks. She should have been more prepared. And when she got up on stage to do the performance afterwards, she seemed fine. And then I had to start second guessing. I'm like, is this a fucking fake? Well, that's. <laughs> well, here's the she thing. seemed fine doing the performance. Is this all fake? Here's I don't know. I don't think it's fake. I don't think Do so I either. think that, like, we addressed it when we started? I'm not saying both sides of the street aren't dirty here. Yeah. Like, she, yeah, she may have had an affair. That's not cool either. But Ralph but, took this opportunity to do the marriage counseling. Right. That he now should have been doing months ago. Correct. You didn't do a fucking thing, and now you're up here, and you're like, I'm willing to help you, to help me, to help our children. Yeah, you have a Jerry We're going to figure moment. this out. Help like, me help fuck you. you, dude. You had opportunities to do that. You didn't do it. Now you're sitting in front of a, a television screen, and you're going to be able to do that now? One- Stupid fucking move for even coming on to the reunion. You do not look better. Everybody in the world, everybody physically that was physically and physically, and mentally, emotionally, emotionally, whatever, in, intellectually, whatever. People watching, as soon as you open your mouth, knew what you were doing. Yep. Drew didn't, but Drew is blinded by emotions and she's got a lot going on and she's getting no support. That's fine. You went after your main target, but guess what? Millions of people were watching this and everybody thinks you're a dickhead. He's the worst. You He's get nothing worst. from this. No. You now also just ran tape for divorce lawyers to go after. There's a lot of shit in there that they can go after. You're going to get screwed. You're going to get fucked in the end. Yeah, maybe you can go to fucking Thailand and get your get a blowjob. That's a different part of the world, right? I, sure. Maybe they don't watch Bravo. I have no idea. Wait, his defense on not getting blowjobs all over the world... I haven't been all over the world. I haven't been all over the world. It, okay, fine. Your world is very small. Yeah, all over verbally. your world. Yeah, yeah, sure. Your world is Tampa Bay, where your cousin sucks your dick. Okay, hey. sick, dude. Like, that's great. But no, it was just fucking... I'm happy we had it. I'm happy he was there because it gives us something to talk about. But as far as watching it, it's it was tough to watch. It was. And, you know, I, I'm glad Kenya finally spoke up and made the comparisons to Mark and said, you know... 
when you really break it down, and you and I understand this, if there's a situation in which somebody calls your significant other a bitch, whether you agree or not, you never say you agree, yeah. ever. There's never a situation in which you go, well, were you being a bitch? Maybe you were a bitch. Yeah, like that <laughs> never will fly. That Sometimes is, you are. Never, and that should tell you exactly right there who Ralph is, what his morals are, and who he gives a fuck about. Yeah. Himself. Yep. But I feel significantly better. So let's move on to some questions, because we got quite a few from You Can't Call Me Val. Do you think Roa should go full reboot or recast a few key housewives for next season? Full reboot. You want everybody to mom. Give me a new show. <laughs> new is always better is what I'm going uh, with. I think that you bring in a new cast, but somehow you get you get OGs coming in in some way, shape, or not as a friend of, not that much involved. Yeah, but no, that's the same thing that we have issues with with New York, though. You got to let the new cast... You got to let Actually, them do their thing. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. I don't know. They they have a good recipe right now. Get rid of the cast, bring in a new one, and then the cool part of that cast, the older cast, put them on a trip. Send them to Ultimate Girls Trip. Send them to fucking Winter House for all I care. I <laughs> Whatever. Which actually makes me think, are we going to see... Uh, no, actually, I'll just save that for another time. Okay. <laughs> I'm waiting on bated breath. Hey, now. Got me on pins and needles over here. Up next... From Rachel Nicholas, any comments on the prisoner escape in Chester County? Not Bravo related, but you talk news. Yeah, he's still out there. <laughs> yeah. He actually got closer. He's no longer in Chester County. He was in Phoenixville last night. That was that was actually going through my head when I was doing the current events, but I feel like it's too localized. Yeah. And to it's reach not out to like fun. Seattle, where all of our fans live, apparently. Shout out Seattle. Yeah, shout out Seattle. Um, yeah, no, that's there's a lot going on there, but apparently Dog the Bounty Hunter is going after him, so that's pretty sweet. Now that Dog got involved, they're going to get him. Go with Christ, brother. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. From Angel Renee, have you guys figured out the right way to say Anguilla? LOL. No. A-Town, baby. A-Town it is. A-Town forever. Even if I go to Anguilla, I'm, I refuse to call it what it's called. I'm going to be like, so happy to be in A-Town, baby. I, I, I just need like one of the locals to just say it. Oh, do we have any... I didn't see it. No, no, I, I mean on screen. No, no, I understand. I'm asking if we have oh, any, any listeners, listeners in Anguilla. There. If there, there's definitely not that. Anguilla. I don't. <laughs> just because you put a little stank on it doesn't mean it's. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Let's do two more. From Shafera, Shafera, or Schaefer A seven one seven. Probably that one. You don't know. <laughs> do you think Courtney and Ralph will eventually come out as a couple? I do. No. I do. No, I don't think it's ever going to happen. I do. She's going to get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter because they're not fucking related to. Who cares? I don't say that that. I, I, oh, I immediately went that. to like. No, 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 no. I don't mean it like that. I okay. just mean that she's going to get pregnant because they're banging. That's all. Nothing else. Oh, you're just talking about science. That's it. Just science. Do we need to have the talk? Birds and the bees. We could. You want to do that uh, little recording sesh? Yeah, I'll do a little birds, birds, and birds and the bees. Birds and the bees. That'll be I've my next doing it solo. wrong my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last one I'm going to read only because it was one of the most shocking, borderline upsetting, and I'm not even a fan of this team, but from Jess Tan 612. Not a question. Just hoping to get a sympathy shout out because I'm a Jets fan. I can sorry I, for your loss. I yeah, we can do that. That's, I mean, it 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 sucks for football across it the does. world because I wanted to see what Rodgers would do in New York. I was playing. Fix your fucking field for the like the love of God. If you're Aaron Rodgers, do not go to the Jets to begin with because they play on the worst field now. Yeah. Well, the second worst, Washington still is the worst. Um, but it just it sucks. I, I wanted to see what he could do, and now you have Zach Wilson, which. We're, Cover your moms, you know? Yeah, watch out. He bangs moms. Yep. But when I was playing uh, Call of Duty last night with Corey, and he said it best, because I do not like Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. I don't think anybody does that has ever played against him, unless you are like a Packers fan or a Jets fan. You probably don't like him, but I do not want to see this man get hurt. No. I want to see, like, he deserves, he has a Hall of Fame career. He deserves to go out when he wants to go out. Corey said it best. I don't want to see him get hurt. I want to see him fail. I want to see him on the field and shit the bed with the Jets. That would be better. Yeah. 
That would be like the Brett Favre thing. Right, exactly. Where he goes to the Jets, he sucks, he sends a dick pic to a reporter, gets in gets in a lot of trouble, then goes to Minnesota and goes to an NFC Championship game. Like, yeah. I, I would like that exact... Minus, no. I actually, no, that would actually make the perfect sense. No, I don't want the dick R- pic part. Rodgers is the exact same person as Favre. And then in like 10 years after that, he's got a welfare issue going on in Mississippi. Oh, that shit's crazy. Yeah. But no, it's I don't... not on that curve. Well, let's, t- <laughs> let's take the dick pic out of it, but... That, that, anyway, there's your sympathy shout out because we, yeah, that sucked, but that's all I got. You got anything else? No. Well, I feel infinitely better. I feel like I just had a therapy session with Dr. Ken. And when you're listening to the next episode, Friday morning, birds will have won. The birds. Wow. What the fuck, dude? Will have won. Don't do that. 3410. Why do you, if it's not, uh, you just. 34-10. 34-10. I don't like doing I'm this. we do it again on Thursday, too, because you we always record Thursday do, but why do you, before the game. Might be up to 37-10. Why do, you, why do you have to do You know I don't like it. I think that's why you do that's it. That's why I do it. But, but why? That's why I do most things. <laughs> this is why <laughs> our listeners think you're a closet narcissist. <laughs> and with that... I think they think both of us are closet remember narcissists. Remember to follow us on socials at Brav underscore Bros. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Brav Bros Podcast. And keep being awesome, because we love you. Anything else? No, I'm I'm good here. All right, Bob Bros are out here. Go Birds. Bye. Baby.